Greetings, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Mistake Zone, your weekly dose of our lives and the mistakes within them. My name is Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Matt? Uh-huh. <laughs> what has your uh, funny bone being tickled right now? <laughs> Jaron, instead of saying yo, I almost said hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt. Matt? Hey, Matt. What's up? We're also joined by two additional co-hosts this week. I have, oh, you know, our dog, Ginny. She's lying right beside me. And mm-hmm. I have my sister's dog, Colonel, who's lying on my oh, lap man. right now. Matt? Mm-hmm. Colonel is a small dog, so... When he sits on my lap, he's able to rest his head on either the armrest or the desk. And Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty good life, Matt. Matt, Mm -hmm. when I hold Colonel, I look at our other dog, Ginny, or our dog, Ginny, and Mm -hmm. ask, hey, do you want me to hold you like this? And she usually gets (laughs) up and walks away. Matt, (laughs) Uh as another member of... I guess I'm part of medium dog gang, but you're part of big dog gang, I would say, correct? Uh, I mean, sort of. Our dog is currently in like the puppy to adult dog size oh, transition. Okay. So, Matt, mm-hmm. does that do- does your dog get a lot of uh, lap sits too, or not in the not a good size for that anymore? No, Jaren, my dog is very skittery. Mm. Uh, she does <laughs> she prefers to you know rough house rather than be pet fair so trying to trying to pick her up and put her on your lap is is just uh you know you're you're heading towards just struggling from the dog fair matt Mm -hmm. you know what dog tiktok meme i love which one the meme of picking up your dog and showing them places they don't normally get to see (laughs) matt sometimes Mm -hmm. i like to pick up my dogs or you know my sister's dog and our dog and uh, mm. show them the microwave or the oh, top man. of the fridge shelf. And our dog, uh, Ginny, she does not like getting picked up. And she has the most stone face. And that's our dog talk for the week. Oh, Tune man. in next no, week. Jaren, Jaren. Sorry, I, w- I want to drop a dog TikTok meme oh. that I want to. <laughs> all right. All right. What's up? Jaren, Jaren, I, I've always been a fan of just randomly barking at your dog. That's really good, Matt. That's really good. Matt? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Since the floodgates are open, oh, no. <laughs> one no a third favorite meme of mine. Mm-hmm. Matt, do you mm-hmm. like the show me your bad dog meme? What's that? I don't think I've seen that one, Jaren. So it's someone, at, you know, all TikTok is is engagement. And it's mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. just asking, hey, show me your bad dog. You know, not the good boys or good girls, but someone, you know, just a bad dog. And it's people posting videos of their dogs being bad aka oh pooping and then kicking the poop all over the (laughs) living room and things like that where i'm really glad that for the most part our dogs in the house currently in the mistake zone uh hq currently are pretty good dogs pretty (laughs) good dogs except my sister's dog gets jealous when we show our dog Ginny affection Mm -hmm. (laughs) so Mm -hmm. it is what it is but Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now that dog talk is behind us. Yes. You know what else I've been doing this week? What is it, Jaren? Browsing Marketplace. Because Ooh. Matt mm-hmm. needs to consume, needs to always be consuming here in the Mistake mm-hmm. Zone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And currently, right now, I am looking at, uh, you know, the usual vinyl records, Hot Matt, Hot Wheels. I'm... Mm-hmm. I found a Godzilla Skyline or, you know, a Skyline with a Godzilla decal at the local grocer for $2. Matt, it's going for $5 in oh, sure. Marketplace. I think I got mm. the W there. I think I got mm. the W there. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. messaging people on Marketplace asking, hey, is this still available? I don't know why that always gets my anxiety going. Yeah. Because I want, usually I want a deal. But sometimes when they hit you back with the, oh, sorry, feels real bad, Matt. But mm. have you been uh, browsing Marketplace recently? I mean, Jaren, I, I go on there every so often because there's a couple couple Marketplace listings I'm, I'm watching and hoping that no one else is going to buy. So Fair. that it goes down in, in, in value. Matt, mm-hmm. were these things you're looking posted recently or wait, Matt, question. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What's what's a good time period of when it was posted versus when you should contact them to see if it's still available or you don't bother at all? Um, I mean, okay, Jen, if I'm not waiting for it to go, like, you know, like, hopefully go down in price, I usually will, if I'm buying something off Marketplace or, like, Kijiji or something like that, I'll just contact them whenever I see the listing because okay. I'm scared somebody is going to buy the thing that I want. Because I'm usually only on Marketplace if I'm looking for something that's, like, maybe a bit more rare or, you know, it's not... Mostly for board games, Jaren, I guess. Like, Fair. when they're not in print anymore, Marketplace and Kijiji and stuff like that are usually a good place to find them. So even if it says posted four weeks ago, six weeks ago, you'll still give them a courtesy message? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll, if it's something I, like, want, yeah, I'll, I'll give them a message. But, Jaren, you... you know, there's a there's a full set of... Those uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hello Kitties that I, I'm i watching slowly go down in price. Oh, man, movies. Matt. Matt, how much is it? Mm-hmm. I don't want to blow up your spot, but what's the sweet spot price for you for you to send them a message? I am hoping that it gets down to like the 6 to like $8 a figure range. Because I feel like that's fair. It's not too bad. How many more do you need? Um, Or do you I want the full like... collection? These ones are really mostly only selling full sets. Okay. So I'm going to get, like, dupes out of it anyways. Fair. That's fair. But, you know, yeah. Like, I, I, it seems like none of the ones were, that are selling singles are, all, like, having the particularly rare ones. Like, the um, Red Eyes or the uh, Exodia or... There's another one that's pretty, like, usually kind of rare. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head right now. Okay. Well, Matt, but mm-hmm. I wish you luck with your ventures where mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's as stressful as Matt missed a Dark Gengar uh, Japanese Ooh. PSA 9 on eBay earlier because got sniped again. Matt. Matt, I need to get Damn. better at last minute bidding and hoping for the best. I mean, Jared, aren't, aren't they like botting to do that? Yeah, but Matt... I want uh-huh. I want to make sure I earn no, no bots, <laughs> no AI to earn my purchase. Oh man, it's my money, Matt. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. plus, I don't know when you see it reach your oh, I've been priced out point. Also feels bad. Ah, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Matt. Mm-hmm. As someone who is, you know, telling you about bummer consumption stories, Matt. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Give me something positive. Have you ever have you bought something recently that makes you feel good, Jaren? I bought something recently that made me feel good at purchase point, feel good at receiving point, and then afterwards I felt really bad. <laughs> it's a mistake zone, Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's up, Jaren? When I was kind of just like looking at stuff on marketplace one day, I happened to um, okay, come across a um listing of somebody just selling bulk candy i don't know for what reason they had this bulk candy they just had a bulk candy kind of like listing and they're like oh this is the best price you can get for like you know whatever these candies are and jared i was skeptical on if this was the best price so i started looking around and jared i think to surprising no one, it wasn't the best price, Jaren. Of course, our, you know, big, huge conglomerate Amazon had yep. a had a better price. Fair. And Jaren, so before I saw local, this Matt, list, right? Mm-hmm. You're shopping local though, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, so, sort of, sort of, you know, Amazon is everywhere, so it's local somewhere. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh-huh. But Jaren, before I was looking at these marketplace listings, I didn't particularly want this, but after I saw a, I saw a better price for it on Amazon, Jaren, and I don't, I don't know why I like, you know, felt the need to buy it, but I now have a one kilogram bag of M M&M and M peanuts. It's gonna last and, you a minute, Matt. <laughs> Jaren, I was very excited to get it. I, you know, ate like three handfuls of M M&M and peanuts, and then I felt sick. <laughs> That's going in a common living area for everyone else to snack on, I feel. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. 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 That, that, oh. That's like me yesterday when I went to the local supermarket and I saw a box of cookies. Like, you know, they're baked in-store cookies, 50% mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was a notable 
amount of cookies in said box. So I, per- I had to get them at 250 for a bunch of cookies, mm-hmm. A2, and now I don't want to eat any more of those cookies. Oh, man. So many cookies, Matt. So many sweets. And to be mm-hmm. honest, Matt, mm-hmm. weekly reminder of father time, uh, always a losing battle, where yep. I think yep. at this age, I should probably cut back, but that sweet oh, tooth yeah. is too strong, Matt. Too mm-hmm. strong. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. thinking about or speaking about having a sweet tooth, Matt. Yes. Mm-hmm. Saw something really sweet earlier this week. And What's that, Jaren? I feel like we're obligated to discuss it because we are the mistake zone is also a you know anime and manga adjacent podcast. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. finally happened. The latest chapter of my dress up darling has the internet a buzz. That, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're going to spoil, as I said, the recent, the most recent chapter of my dress up darling. And we should probably say what chapter number that is. Uh, you're right, Matt. That is chapter 107. Mm-hmm. So let's just get into it. Matt, mm-hmm. finally happened. We finally saw some big, big progress. Matt, mm-hmm. what did you think of Gojo's confession? Jaren, I am glad that it finally happened. I honestly was. You know, kind of not expecting the drop, kind of just out of, I guess, anime cliche. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought he would maybe, you know, kind of like start saying it and then Marine will cut him off or something. And, you know, you're going to have another like, (laughs) I don't know, four months of a gloomy dress up, darling. Where I'm really glad it happened. Yeah, there's that part in the beginning of the chapter where uh, uh, Marin asked Gojo, oh, you know, why were you so gloomy? And telling him just to forget it, and she walks off, where Mm -hmm. I fully expected at that moment for Gojo to actually leave. And as you said, gloomy dress-up darling for the next couple of weeks, and we essentially have a, essentially, not necessarily self-destructive, but really weird, you know, it's anime cliche at this point it's a common trope mm-hmm. big misunderstanding because matt we've read our, and watched our fair share of romance-based anime and manga so i was fully mm-hmm. expecting that to happen and i was kind of worried for that to happen too because usually when your two central characters have that major misunderstanding there's always those supporting and anchor characters that allow them to kind of talk through their problems and try to kind of navigate the, all those restless teenage feelings where if Gojo were to walk away in the beginning of this chapter, I was thinking about it this week, who would be that catalyst to help them come back together? Just because even though we have a lot of side characters and a lot of supporting characters, I'm not sure there are that many characters who are I feel like are close enough to give each of them that respective push, but I'm not sure if you agree or disagree with that. Yeah. I think for the most part, there isn't really a good character that would give them that push. The only one that I think could maybe have it make sense is like the grandpa, but even that's a bit of a stretch. I think Matt, not Mm -hmm. to get all dark, but we saw a few, let's say flags being raised, especially when that chapter a few, uh, I guess weeks, months ago, where Marin or Marin had the camera and she was taking pictures and there's that cute picture of the grandpa at the end where a lot of people were thinking, oh no, is he going to pass away sometime (laughs) soon? Where that there's a dark alternate timeline where Gojo actually leaves and the you the catalyst that brings them back together is Gojo's grandfather passing. And oh, I don't want to think about that dark, <laughs> dark world. Uh huh. Speaking about alternate timelines, Matt, mm-hmm. is there also a you know my dark dress up darling alternate where Gojo leaves? Uh, mm-hmm. They're moody towards each other. Do you think there is an alternate? storyline where juju finds out and she starts to pursue gojo once again 
Not that she pursued him uh, previously, but there were some teases, um, both in the anime and the manga, from what I recall. But would you think that would be a appropriate storyline if to help drag this if uh, Gojo and Marin were to you know continue this conflict? I don't know, Jaren. I don't think so. Like they never wrote her as that kind of character, mm-hmm. so I don't really like have in my head that that could happen. And the way that you know, like Dress Up Darling is written, there isn't really Jaren. Only if this was like a harem would I would I uh, expect that, and or only if this was a um, like an actual drama instead of a comedy manga would I would I ever expect that to happen. Fair. Because Matt, mm-hmm. both Marin, we got Gojo, both pretty, they're pretty pure for this world, Matt, I must mm-hmm. say, where I was actually really impressed with 107 as a whole, mostly just because just seeing Gojo pour his heart out and actually explain why he was so cold after um, the anime con or the annual arc uh, and just explaining how yes he's actually really jealous and he realizes that him creating for Marin even though he adores it puts him in a situation where other people cast their gaze upon her and that does make him pretty jealous where I think you know going back to the standard harem tropes or Mm -hmm. romance tropes and just this feeling of hey we're going to have some misunderstandings and we're going to have this drag on just for him to cut to the chase, seeing his, you know, this is a now or never situation while still mentally internalizing that if I open this floodgate, things will never be the same again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love that word vomit. He essentially did where he is able to, you know, tell the reader that this is such a bad idea, but I have to do it. I, I, this is, it's now or never, but that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, regarding, I guess, the whole midpoint towards the ending, how did you feel about the confession and just, I guess, his attitude overall? Like I, I said, like, I, I liked his, I was surprised to see that his confession happened in this chapter. And mm-hmm. Jaren, I, I kind of just really liked the kind of, um, I don't like emotional or tone turning point after the confession, yes. which is, it felt like really, really good, bringing us back to what I wanted out of Dress Up Darling. Mm-hmm. Where it's such a good contrast for Marin and how she reacts, uh, considering just that cool demeanor that we saw, in the not only in the beginning of the chapter, but, you know, the last few chapters as well. Mm-hmm. Just seeing her really distant, really cool to Gojo, and the moment he revealed his feelings, just a weight obviously lifted off her shoulders based on all the you know internal monologues she's had in the past but for her to instantly go back to that bubbly character that everyone really comes to my dress up darling for great Mm -hmm. to see Matt. great Mm -hmm. to see for Mm -hmm. her uh just going a zero to a hundred a hundred miles per second and again it's reverting back to the comfort food of Marin's bubbly, but also Gojo is overwhelmed by the bubbliness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we finally get the long-awaited kiss. And now it starts a new arc, Matt, where fiending for the next chapter just to see what the conversation's like afterwards. And in terms of story and moving forward, Matt, mm-hmm. where do you want this to kind of go? And is there any essentially kind of smaller storylines um, that were hit teased prior that you would want to see kind of now explored with the fact that they're in a relationship? I mean, I think there's the usual kind of like relationship stuff of like, like, you know, are how public are they going to be with the relationship? Mm-hmm. How um, does the relationship, you know, how does everybody, I guess, around them react to the relationship? Um like kind of like story wise, I do kind of want to see more progress, or like I guess like any progress at all. I guess towards the kind of like people trying to scout Marine sort of yes. thing. 
because uh, I think that would be very interesting. And like maybe that also leading to people wanting to scout uh, Gojo just to see, you know, him as a, a costume designer at some point mm-hmm. or something, pulling him, you know, kind of, I, I think it'd be very interesting to see a storyline that's more so like, uh, like a costume design future versus a Hina doll yes. future. Because I think that would be like, I don't know, a good a good plot point to to look at. Where I was really excited previously about Marin being scouted and then the idea of her being a professional cosplayer. But now mm-hmm. with them being in a relationship, I feel like the stakes are a bit higher just because now she's aware that he only wants to design for her and i think that flip i think that would be such a good flip where you know they change roles and as you said people are scouting gojo and then she realizes oh wait now they're looking at his work and Mm -hmm. i kind of want to see that dynamic at play as well where yeah in and that conflict between Hina dolls and just costume, even fashion, des- not necessarily fashion design, but costume design would be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, a storyline I do want to see. And hopefully that means we see more Akira as well. And I know we mm-hmm. haven't talked about My Dress Up Darling in a bit, but we did get a few other storylines kind of wrapped up uh, since then. And got to ask Matt before we move on. Mm-hmm. What did you think about the wrap up the supposed wrap up right now about the childhood friend from Gojo's past. Jaron, I feel like that was such a weird kind of like I don't I wouldn't really consider that an arc in itself because it was kind mm-hmm. of like a subplot that was happening, I feel like, since Coffin or like maybe earlier, I can't like fully remember. But the whole thing with the kind of like childhood friend stuff is was really weird to me. I I personally like didn't get much impact out of it to be yeah. honest. No, I totally know what you mean. Where when they br- decided to bring her back, uh, and you kind of think, oh, is the it, in some ways it re- it is a, the catalyst to Marin realizing, oh, me asking him about you know cosplaying and taking away from his experience with Hina dolls. Uh, mm-hmm. And all of that, you know, leading to the initial misunderstanding. You can debate that's the catalyst. But at the same time, I feel like if at, you just need any reason for Marin to... Um, it's not his... It's his aunt, right? Uh, just to, for him, for her to see Gojo's aunt and then for her to tell Marin the history. I don't think you necessarily needed the childhood friend character to come back where mm-hmm. it's one of those... It was too convenient for me, and that convenience took away from its impact. And the only thing that I worry about in retrospect is, do you only bring her back because you're winding up the story and you want to tie up loose ends? Or Mm -hmm. do you think that's just me doom posting? I mean, like, I I feel like this is maybe not really even that close to the end of Dress Up Darling. Or I hope at least it's not that close to the end of Dress Up Darling. Like, I would hope that this is maybe, like, the 75% point Mm -hmm. in terms of, like, completion as far as Dress Up Darling goes. Because, like, I don't know, Sharon, I I want to see this kind of, like, wrapped up in a a satisfying way, but I don't want to see it wrapped up anytime soon. Fair. And like I said, or like we discussed earlier, um, a lot of ripe storylines now that they're a couple, but yeah, at the same time, the childhood friend, well... It was nice getting a bit more backstory about Gojo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It, it feels too convenient. I feel like you can still bring her in, but maybe down the road too. But uh, who cares, Matt? We finally got the confession. And <laughs> hopefully it's uh, some really good storytelling from here. Now that the drought is done, <laughs> we're, we yeah. made it past uh, the ditch. And now... Uh, we can kind of see them and how their relationship uh, unfolds from here. But Matt, mm-hmm. Jaren, let's say that Dress Up Darling, you know, it gets its second season. Do you think that they get to Haniel in the second season and resolve it? Or do you think that's like too much stuff? Matt, mm-hmm. I feel like with the second. So with second season, I forget 
I mean, there would be the school arc where she oh, yeah, like, does the, the culture fest, right? Yeah, the culture festival, and then coffin. Um, yeah, coffin I feel like arc. Coffin. Then, you can uh-huh. probably fast track for like the culture fest. You need. You really need um, just because some of the kind of imagery there on point. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I feel like the culture fest. Now, nah, don't kill me for this. Uh-huh. I, I feel like culture fest could be a movie. Uh, just because. I, I, Jared, as much as I like Dress Up Darling, I don't think Dress Up Darling gets a movie. I think maybe an OVA. Because the impact of Marin dressing up as the prince character or whatever, mm-hmm, the male character mm-hmm. or the host character, I feel like that's such an impactful image that you need to use that as an ending to something. Like that's a conclusion you work towards where mm-hmm. realistically, if it's another 12, 13 episode season, it is a culture festival and then... I'd hope you burn through Coffin and then you end on Haniel where I I think that would be the route, but uh, all the way through Haniel or do you think it like stops after like, you know, just like the photo shoot stuff? No, I I feel like it it would be a weird place to end a season on, but Mm -hmm. I don't think you can end it on the confession considering how much is happening even if you kind of with with coffin i feel like you're all you'd also have to cut out the juju and her sister stuff which Mm. is also not great considering that was kind of what carries coffin alongside akira where you'd have to trim so much side character stuff uh-huh. That, I'm, I don't know if it's worth it at that point. But Damn. then again, mm-hmm. if you're watching my dress up darling for Marin and Goja, I think you have to. But that's kind of me. Where uh-huh. the Hanyul, it ends, I could see it ending at the photo shoot and then Gojo realizing uh, like the subway ride back, I feel like would be such a bummer ending. <laughs> but to get there within the next season, you'd have to cut out all the side character stuff, mm, in I my see. opinion. But how are you feeling? I mean, I kind of think it's too much as well. I don't mm-hmm. know, like, where they would cut it. Because I, I, I also think that, like, if it was everything from when the anime ended up until where the manga currently is at uh, chapter 107, yeah. that is way too much stuff to shove into a 12, 13 episode season. But, Jaren, I, I just want to see the, you know, marine reaction voiced. Yeah, because I don't know. I could, when I was reading those panels, I could just hear it being voice acted in my head, and I just want to see it now. Fair for the Haniel stuff, right? No, not the Haniels. Oh, I mean, like the end of the Haniel stuff, like when okay. when like Marina's reacting to Gojo's confession. Fair. Like I just want to hear that voice acted. Not. Hmm. The more I think about it, the more I feel like you just cut coffin altogether. <laughs> Jared, I, I, I think we both didn't like Coffin Arc. So. No, it we. I admit it. I didn't like Coffin. I think the things I like about Coffin, you would technically have to cut out because what I liked about Coffin was all the side character stuff. And at that point, that means Juju and her sister don't get any growth. Uh, we probably don't see Akira. And if you want to get to the sweet, sweet confession, especially in a second season. Mm hmm. You, you, I feel like you have to cut Coffin at that point. It's either yeah. you cut Coffin or you don't get to the Hanyol arc. Yeah. yeah. Which is a pain. And if you really want to get to it, then yeah, Co- Coffin is what I'm most curious about. Mm-hmm. Where, Matt, you make Coffin the OVA. <laughs> that That's mm-hmm. how I feel. Uh, but... Yep, my dress up darling, chapter 107, and you know, just some of the chapters before. Matt, mm-hmm. I have to admit, read 107 like three times this week. Oh man. I read the second half of 107 <laughs> multiple times. It, it's a good chapter, man. It's a good chapter, and I'm excited to see what's next for these two. But Matt, mm-hmm. speaking about the number two, 
<laughs> I hear you've been playing something this week. Oh man, Jaren, I have been sp- I have been playing Shapes Two. Okay. That Shapes with a Z. I don't know if you can hear it in my pronunciation. I maybe it's because I read the name prior to us recording, so it was in my head. Matt, Matt, good uh-huh. good use of mm-hmm. the letters out there. Uh huh. Jaren, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Jared, this is one of those games where I I hate it that I'm <laughs> I'm playing this game. <laughs> really, Matt? Uh huh. What is this game? Jaren, Shapes Two is basically an efficiency game. Okay. Um, it is one of those games like Factorio, like Satisfactory, where um, in Shapes you are you know kind of given. A couple resources. Um, the first is basically colors, and the second is shapes. Um, the shapes that you're given are comprised of kind of quarters of other shapes. So, like for example, if you wanted a whole circle, you would kind of combine uh, four kind of like quarter circles together so that you know like when you put them all in like a two by two grid you have a a circle right that makes sense and in these kind of like quarter shapes you have kind of like a whole bunch of shapes whether they're like try like you know tiny triangles tiny squares um there's like kind of like spikes and like you know kind of as you go further into the game the the quarter shapes get like slightly more different and elaborate and kind of the goal of the game is to set up um you are kind of also given a lot of tools where whether they're like conveyor belts um you know kind of like you know cannons that like shoot uh things across a, um a space um you have combiners where it takes like kind of like two shapes and it like pushes them together uh you have painters which you know takes the previously mentioned paint and it paints everything that um you, like passes underneath it through like a conveyor belt and you are also giving you know the the stuff that you know makes it very nice and crunchy where you have like you know and gates or gates like sore and like equals gates and you're able to use them to kind of manipulate your conveyor belts so that you know as shapes pass through some will go forward some will go right some will go left like it is is that sort of game you are basically trying to make as efficient of a factory as possible and jaron this is the kind of game that really like tickles my brain and i hate how much time i spend on this kind of game because you know Especially at the beginning of these sort of games, Jen, because you don't have all your tools yet. Yes. So as you get more and more of your tools, you're like, oh, man, I have to, I want to destroy everything I've created because it will allow me to recreate it in a more efficient way. And, you know, you kind of like let that run for a while. And um, the kind of like progression in shapes itself is actually very interesting because um you know you kind of have your main goals of hey make like this shape that are these colors and like you know this many shapes tall comprised of these like however many quarter shapes and then you kind of get like these submissions which are all kind of very more complicated shapes but they as you kind of like complete them they kind of build on each other and you're just making more and more of an amalgamation of a machine and you begin to realize, oh, man, like this portion of the machine that I made like earlier isn't keeping up with this other part that oh, is now no. combining with it. Yeah. So now th- like this, <laughs> this is like an efficiency problem that I need to solve here. And Jaren, I feel like I'm like I can't I don't know if I've said on the uh, show before. I, I'm pretty sure I've said before. Like I, I do like software, uh, like software engineering for yes. as like an actual job. And when I am looking <laughs> at shapes and like the factories that i've made i'm just seeing bad code (laughs) that i've written and i just want to rewrite but you know just like with real code there are some things where it's like ah this is this is working okay there was like a bigger problem i need to fix somewhere else or 
I have no idea how this portion of my like machine works anymore. And if I try to like take it out, I think I'm gonna break something. Because Jaren, I I like horribly broke one of my uh one of my kind of like machine setups because I I thought, hey, like when I started this game, I thought, hey, I can just like, you know, stop making this machine output stuff. But I kind of didn't account for the fact that if it's not outputting anything, all the stuff that's going into it is now backing up. Oh, and no. that breaks something else just way further earlier in the line. And that has, you know, a domino effect on everything else that comes after it, even in other <laughs> other machines. And what I say, Jen, is I think like you need a, a particular kind of, you know, sick and twisted enjoyment to, to like this kind of game. So Matt, I've mm-hmm. never been able to get into what's the genre of this game of this factory? Is it just like factory game or Yeah, I I don't know what the name of the like this game genre is. I've always just like grouped them by saying, "Hey, it's like Factorio." So, yeah, let's say Factorio lights mm-hmm. or likes. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I could ever get into these type of games for <laughs> You know, the reasons you just listed where uh, need to break something I invested all that time initially because I can make it more efficient Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. wait, as you said, my app, this one portion isn't having uh, enough output that to my or the overall machines liking. So now things are getting backed up and it's causing everything else to break where Mm -hmm. that you, you said it, you work in a career field that you know kind of resembles a factorial like in real yeah, in IRL yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so I'm not sure how you're just not getting you know you're not a constant <laughs> ball of anxiety every time you play this where Matt how, how are you relaxing playing a game that closely resembles your job is what I'm trying Jared, to ask I think I'm not <laughs> Jared, sometimes I finish playing this game. I walk away from my computer. And I'm like, oh, this that's a stupid ass game. I'm gonna, I I need to like think about how I'm going to fix this problem. And I'll like, you know, go into my kitchen. I'll go cook something and eat. And the whole time I'm just thinking about like how I'm gonna make these stupid blue squares paint themselves faster so I can combine them with these like you know like green spikes so that I can make the stupid <laughs> stupid machine work better. That's Jaren, I've I've gone to the me, Matt. yeah, Jaren, I've gotten to the point where I'm dreaming about this game, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Jaren, when I think about games that I'm trying to that I'm dreaming about, I'm dreaming about the final boss of Elden Ring DLC, oh, where <laughs> for you, Matt, isn't that uh-huh. a nightmare? You dreaming <laughs> about your factorial light and then waking up to do uh, your factorial life. No, Jared. No. See, see, when when you dream about it in game, you get the epiphany of, oh, I know how to solve this problem now. Yeah. And Jared, I think that like you know, alternation between frustration and that dopamine kind of like drip of, oh, I've just solved this problem. I haven't. Now I need to go like fix this other problem that that like uh, this is created by now being too efficient. Okay. Not and mm-hmm. too much for me. That is too much for me. I don't know, Jared. It's 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 a good time if you are a person who I think like kind of likes likes problem solving and won't, won't get like you know too too tilted by it. But okay, I don't know. It's the tilted aspect <sighs> that uh, scares me, Matt. Yeah, oh, man. But shapes too, as you mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you play the original one, or was this just something new that came on your radar? Uh, I did not play the original one, no. I, I saw the original one, and it looked... For some reason, I think the original one looked too intense for me. I think the, okay. the kind of graphical style for it was so, um, I guess, like, not a th- as much of a thought that it 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 looked more menacing <laughs> than, okay. it, than it probably actually was. But, Fair uh, enough, Matt. I think uh, Shape... The, the graphical style of Shape 2 is actually, like, very, very nice. I think it's, like, very aesthetically pleasing with like you know everything moving around and i don't know it feels it feels really good to play when you're 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 hitting a stride in it that doesn't make you sad 
Oh man, that too stressful for mm-hmm. me. But that mm-hmm. shapes to mm-hmm. available now. Yeah, uh, Jared, it's okay. I'll I'll be free in in like two days when when Wu Kong comes out. Okay, it's so not something to talk about next week. At least mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. to talk about next week. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. speaking about shapes two. Yes. If we took the number two mm-hmm. and multiplied it by two, we get four. <laughs> and that, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Speaking about the number four, mm-hmm. Fortnite Chapter Five Season Four began just a few days ago. Oh man! And Matt, mm-hmm. my the post-apocalyptic setting is over. The Matt, I didn't like last season's Fortnite because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the season really focused on car combat and considering there were three you know boss cars that you'd have to defeat the you know an npc boss and then be able to get their car and the last circle usually was just a bunch of people in boss cars not Mm -hmm. my favorite Mm -hmm. not my favorite matt and it's okay because with fortnite chapter five season four uh a new meta is upon us and at least the meta build is more accessible than the cars were. But uh, mm. for the new season of Fortnite, Matt, this is another Marvel season. And uh, oh, it's okay. called, it's focusing on our friend, Dr. Doom. Uh, and with it is a new Marvel inspired battle pass where we have seven new characters for you to unlock. But Matt. Uh huh. Prior to the release of, you know, the season of Fortnite, uh, Epic Games announced that moving forward, starting with this season, their Battle Pass items could potentially come to the store uh, and be purchased separately uh, around 18 months after its initial release, where uh, considering that Disney now has a bit of a stake in... Epic Games and, you know, they're collaborating with Fortnite a lot more moving forward. Even with D23 last week, they announced a bunch of different Disney skins are going to come to the game, you know, including the Incredibles and some villains and, you know, more Star Wars stuff as well. But Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about, I know we've discussed it before, but we're now 31 seasons into Fortnite. Uh, what do you think <laughs> oh, about man. them, you know, essentially turning back the decision that, hey, once a battle pass is finished, if you didn't unlock those characters or those cosmetics, they're gonzo. But mm-hmm. yeah, Matt, what do you think about them turning around on that decision? I mean, Jaren, I think for me personally, I like that sort of thing. Um because I know that I personally am a person who very much is uh, got by FOMO. Yes. And the removal of uh, FOMO from the Battle Pass, or any Battle Pass system, I guess, makes me far more, you know, <laughs> I guess like probably it's probably bad for Epic, but a lot less likely to spend money on the game. Right. Like, I, I think personally, I've always been more of a fan of... um the battle pass style where they like create a battle pass, but it never goes away. Right. It's just always purchasable. Yeah. Um, and, and then you can choose which one's buttons. active or whatever mm-hmm, at mm-hmm, any given mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm curious, just because of course, Matt, a lot of the discourse around the decision by Epic, uh, at least in the communities that I follow, you know, mixed bag, you know, you had mm-hmm, a lot of people mm-hmm. really happy about the decision to kind of turn around this Battle Pass exclusivity. And then you also have, you know, that, let's say, other side of the coin of, hey, mm-hmm. I worked hard to unlock all of these things, so I should be able to have them even though they're all sitting in my locker. But I digress, Matt. New Fortnite season and it is Marvel themed, so every all the contents are Marvel inspired. And mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. since this was the second Marvel Battle Pass, I wanted to play a quick game. Okay. Uh, and I want to know your thoughts on the two Marvel Battle Passes and the characters that they chose to include. So Matt, okay. mm-hmm. Fortnite Nexus War was the Chapter Two Season Four season, and the characters you could unlock were Iron Man, mm-hmm. Thor. Mm-hmm. Groot, Storm, 
Wolverine as the secret skin, uh, Mystique, and Doctor Doom, where Mystique also had the special ability of if you were to kill someone as Mystique, you can use her emote to turn into the skin you just killed. Nice. Okay, and I was about to ask that. <laughs> that has not come to the game since. Her skin is the only skin to be able to do that, Matt. Mm. Much to my disappointment when the eventually, uh, you know, released uh, Toga from My Hero Academia, uh, from My Hero Academia, and she didn't have that technique. So mm. I was a bit disappointed. But yeah, that's actually surprising. Mm-hmm. Matt, so that was the Nexus War chapter to season four. Mm. Uh, a lot of heavy hitters there, a lot of heavy mm. hitters mm-hmm. there. And, you know, in some cases, we've had other variations of, you know, Wolverine and Thor. Uh, but, you know, those classic outfits have only been in that season. And, you know, it's gone since it's finished. They're gone. Can't get them mm. ever again. Mm-hmm. So, Matt, this mm. brings us to Fortnite chapter five, season four, uh, Absolute Doom. And, of course, we have a new Doctor Doom variant as the secret skin this season. But mm-hmm. joining him is Gwenpool, War mm-hmm. Machine, uh, Black Panther, but the Shuri variant. Uh, Mysterio, Emma Frost, and Matt, I'm not sure how much you know about Fortnite, but there are two Fortnite OCs in Jonesy and Peely, the banana. Okay. And you have Captain Jonesy, who is Jonesy with kind of inspired by Captain America. And you have uh, Peelverine, which is <laughs> Peely, but Wolverine. Uh-huh. And Matt, Mm-hmm. How do you think uh, Absolute Doom's Battle Pass compares to the Nexus War? I mean, that's Jaren. That's definitely much rougher than the uh, you know the Nexus War one. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that like I'm okay. I'm guessing like the rest of the Avengers have come out as like separate skins or like you know singularly released skins, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. So I'm guessing like this is really <laughs> the kind of scraping at the uh, Marvel licensing like bucket to see Where, who they can still uh, pull up. So when initially this season was sort of leaked um, in some you know documentation, we saw the picture of Doctor Doom. So people would assume that, oh, this would be the Fantastic Four season. But apparently ah, those yes. characters will be coming to the shop separately because Matt, that's how they get you. Mm. That's how they get you. But yeah, I feel like what disappoints me the most of the season is the Captain Jonesy and the Pilverine skins. Yeah. Where yeah. Uh, I think if you're going all in on a Marvel season, having characters and like, you know, your Fortnite OC is inspired by Marvel characters. Not really feeling that per se, just because not, you know, not, I don't know what this says about me, but not a fan of the Mimi Battle Pass skins, whether it be Peely, whether it be Peabody, whether it be like Meow Schools or whatever the like, mm-hmm. where, uh, if you're going all in in Marvel, I don't know. Just having your Fortnite OCs playing cosplay uh, doesn't feel too great, especially because yeah. you know that they're just going to pump up the heroes that are missing or the villains that are missing as separate purchases. So, yeah, when I saw mm-hmm. it, you know, I, too, had that idea of, wow, they're really... <laughs> yeah. This is really who you're turning up. You know, I'm not going to lie. I do like how Shuri looks, you know, Gwenpool, Emma Frost... Uh, War Machine for all the people who missed the original Iron Man armor as well. I'm actually uh, surprised surpri- that Mysterio and Emma Frost weren't already in. Yeah, but not. Mm-hmm. Also, Emma Frost being considered a villain for the season when she's been kind of that hero slash anti hero for a decade now. Also a bit weird, but he- gotta mm-hmm. pad it somehow. But. Mm-hmm. Matt, new Marvel season, that means new Marvel weapons. And let me say this, Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, the meta, not too hot right now. <laughs> Yeah, Even though it's just drop it on me. So you have a few Marvel inspired weapons. You have not the mm-hmm. Captain America shield, which of course you're a lot. It's essentially a boomerang. You toss it. It kind of homes in as long as you're generally aiming at your enemy's direction. Mm-hmm. And if they're grouped up, it will bounce between everyone in that area before coming back to you. Mm-hmm. And then you have. Four War Machine items. You have War okay. Machine's Hover bo- uh, Boost, which lets you uh, hover in the air and then dash in the air, you know, as long as you have the fuel. And once the fuel runs out, you know, it's on the cooldown. You have that War Machine's Auto Turret, which is 
a mm -hmm. turret that sits on your back and when you activate it it will automatically lock into someone in your vicinity and shoot missiles or shoot at them for 10 damage a hit mm -hmm. and then you also have war machines gauntlets which is doubles as primary fire is a submachine gun alt fire is missiles on cooldown and then you know there's a dr doom mythic that isn't too great but not Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. essentially remember how i said last season everyone was in cars and that was a pain yeah uh let's say every by the last circle so far in Fortnite's absolute doom everyone just war machine flying in the air and throwing <laughs> captain <laughs> america shields at you as an auto turret uh, mm -hmm. locks onto you where again mm -hmm. these items are a bit more available you know if you find an avengers chest scattered throughout you know one of them's bound to come up uh, they're bound to come up in, you know, the current rota uh, loot pool chests and uh, just out in the world. So a lot more easier than a souped up car. But at the same time, that it's hard not to want to pick up uh, one of the cooler or all their weapons like an AR or like the dual machine guns when mm -hmm. you essentially need to be war machine by the final circle. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, let's just say I'm excited to play Marvel Rivals after this. <laughs> But um, Matt, mm -hmm. as an outsider looking in, um, when it when you hear about a battle royale whose meta is so centered around the gimmicks of the season, how does that make you want to play it more or play it less at that point? Um, I think personally for me, I would probably want to play it less, but that's because I, you know, I like knowing what's kind of like meta going into it right so you know having the reliable like hey they are always meta or shotgun always meta sort of thing is appealing to me uh so you know kind of having to deal with flavor of the patch kind of uh metas is is always uh kind of not not great for me fair and i don't know it just speaks to the current state of Fortnite, where i think about all my wins for the past couple of seasons and mm -hmm. for the most part it's me utilizing you know the flavor of the season whether it yeah. be the boss cars of last season the marvel stuff this season uh the water bending whenever the avatar stuff was in there where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they make i you know i'm playing unranked of course you know i'm just grouping up duos uh trios whoever's available to play and it is just a goofy battle uh, battle royale to play. If I wanted more serious gameplay, I'd play ranked. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of weird that you have all these diverse loot pools, all these different weapons. But by the end of it, it's everyone essentially rocking the same thing. You know, the hover boots, the shield. And who knows? Maybe they'll have the auto turret. Maybe they'll have the war machine gauntlets. But mm -hmm. it's just weird to me how... The Fortnite, a Fortnite season is kind of defined by the gimmick. And for better or for worse, I'm enjoying it. But I also feel like it will wear itself out too thin until like nerfs start to happen. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And then at that point, then the next thing that's unnerved will be the hotness. So I don't I mean, know. It's classic. Mm -hmm. It's just a weird way to view a battle royale at this point. And Fortnite being as old as it is, you know, you got to keep it fresh. But uh, I feel like the honeymoon periods for each new season, for me personally, have been getting shorter and shorter just when you realize, okay, this is what the final circle will devolve to. But that's just me, Matt. That's just me. I'm excited to unlock Doctor Doom, excited to unlock Emma Frost, and seeing what you know, other Disney stuff comes here. Um, but at the same time, Matt, I'm still waiting for uh, those Final Fantasy VII characters that were apparently rumored two seasons ago. By oh, man. Matt, mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to run by you before we leave Fortnite is yes. uh, every season parallel to the Battle Royale stuff, there are seasons for the festival side of things, you know, the rhythm game portion where, you know, mm -hmm. you can use the skins uh, in any mode, but they're mostly promoted through the festival stuff. Um, yeah. Last season, it was Metallica. This season, it is Carol G. The season after this, according to the leaks, is Snoop Dogg. But uh -huh. not mm -hmm. December is when it gets interesting for me personally. 
Okay. Uh, not taking away from Carol G and Snoop Dogg, but Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rumor for December, the festival spotlight ar- artist is our girls, new jeans. Matt, will you be playing <laughs> Fortnite with me in December? No, probably not, Jay. <laughs> okay, Matt. Oh, okay. Man. I'll yeah, send okay. you. If, if you want more K-pop stuff, you can you can go uh, play PUBG with uh, Black. I think Blackpink is in PUBG. Matt, um, I told you that, right? Where I literally spent forty dollars for oh, Elisa skin in PUBG, <laughs> played with Subin for three rounds, and and uninstalled the game. I mean, Jared, you know, if you if you're getting tired of the uh, Fortnite uh, meta, you can you can, at least you always have your your K-pop PUBG skin. Oh man, Matt, that was a bad print. I shouldn't have bought that Blackpink skin in, in PUBG. Matt, are you ever um. gonna go back to PUBG? I always get like the the inkling to go into PUBG every so often, and then I kind of like remember how bad I am at PUBG, and I think, oh, maybe you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go play Apex, and then I end up going down that same uh, thought process branch. That mm-hmm. you opened the floodgate, so I think we have to talk about this really briefly. Okay. Uh, speaking about PUBG, Matt, mm-hmm. uh, remember a few weeks ago or even months ago now, when Microsoft essentially closed down a bunch of, um, a few of its studios, including Tango Gameworks, who developed Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, last week, it was announced that, uh, I'm taking this from IGN, uh, Hi-Fi Rush IP and Tango Gameworks, acquired by Krafton, uh, who are the parent company for PUBG, um, they were acquired from Xbox. The studio will no longer sh- uh, be shut down, and this will allow... Um, Tango Gameworks under Crafton to continue developing the Hi-Fi Rush IP and explore future projects. Um, I believe it was PC Gamer who reported later on in the week that around 50 people uh, from Tango Gameworks will be um, coming back officially and then, you know, be part of the Crafton's Japan subsidiary. Uh, but Matt did not mm. expect for this to happen Normally, when we see closures in the video game industry, uh, let's face it, Matt, you don't see, hey, yeah, we're going to acquire this closed down studio. So to see Krafton actually acquire Tango Gameworks and not only that, um, confirm that they're ca- going to continue exploring the Hi-Fi Rush uh, IP, I thought that was one of the coolest things I've seen all year, you know. For an industry that is being hit hard with closures, to see some sort of uh, saving grace, I don't know, it was pretty good to see. And again, Mm -hmm. really big fan of Hi-Fi Rush. Um, And for them to continue with that IP and continue to explore it and its potential, uh, really excited to see that. Where, Matt? Mm -hmm. How long do you think until we see Hi-Fi Rush skins in PUBG? Oh, Gerald, would that do they have any kind of like particularly um, animated kind of like skins in in PUBG? Not from what I remember, not really. Where it's probably uh-huh. going to be like their outfits um, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that will be translated into the game. So could, this could be the chance for them to experience if they aren't already uh, to be experienced. Uh, experiment with the anime cell shaded skins or you know animated gun skins as well but mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. um hi-fi rush back from the dead uh is this something you're excited to see grow as an ip i mean yeah like jaren i still haven't played hi-fi rush mm-hmm. but the kind of like look and aesthetic and the kind of like videos i get pushed about hi-fi rush which is like kind of like weirdly a lot i don't know really what happened to my algo there but i don't know the the um i guess like the series itself seems like very interesting to me and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm wondering what else they're going to do with it because um kind of just like based off the kind of feel it gives it does seem like a series that is like I don't know, I don't know, franchisable. Like, it, it seems like a series that can, like, branch out into a bunch of different things. Where with Hi-Fi Rush um, specifically, I think, mm-hmm. based on what I remember, I think you can still continue with those characters. But at the same time, I think given its aesthetic and how, you know, the action interacts with the music, I wouldn't 
the again remember when we talked about cyberpunk and how we wanted to see something like tales of night city where it's these different mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. um in this world where i would love for the hi-fi rush ip to kind of expand into different side stories following different characters and more importantly different genres of music and styles of music mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. as much as i did like hi-fi rush and it's you know ro- it, it was mostly grounded in that rock uh, an alternative um, sound and aesthetic where I would love to see different genres, whether it be K-pop, whether it be, you know, electronic, whether it be hip hop and have those, you know, just styles and music to come together for a new game and not necessarily deal with the characters that we know and love, but, you know, other characters and other stories to be told. And I think if you keep that graphic style, but expand the different genres sure it might be cool to see the original cast in a fish out of water uh situation but i would also just want them to explore different characters at that point as well because mm-hmm. that, it's a solid foundation of a game uh that I'm, I'm just glad to see it get another shot another chance and that mm-hmm. you know this also runs the risk of you know tango gameworks being able to explore future projects how silly do you think Microsoft will be if one of those projects actually becomes like a big blockbuster? I mean, Jaron, I I think it would be cool if that happened, but like I don't have that much that yeah. much faith in the high fi Russia I think. Fair enough, Matt. Fair enough. But Matt, mm-hmm. all this makes me want is just Jet Set Radio Future to be remastered. Oh, my <laughs> my regular check in to put that out in the universe and want it to happen. But Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kind of a beefy episode this week. Talked about mm. our friends Gojo and Mirin. We talked about shapes. We talked mm-hmm. about Fortnite, and we talked mm-hmm. about Hi Fi Rush. But Matt, mm-hmm. before we leave, I-, I feel like there's one challenge that we have to do for our friends. Yep, Jaren, of course, I am bringing the Don't Match Me Challenge this week. Okay. And, you know, as always, the Don't Match Me Challenge is, you know, a a challenge we do here on the Mistake Zone where we are going to ask you a bunch of questions and you just have to give an answer that isn't the same as our answer. I was Um, thinking about it where, hmm. you know, normal mode is trying not to match... uh, Whoever brings in the 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 challenge for the week, but hard mode mm-hmm. is not trying to match the both of us, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think is mm-hmm. pretty fun as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Jaren, of course, with the game that I brought this week of Shapes Zitu, yep. uh, my don't match me challenge is going to be about shapes. Okay. And um, Jaren, let's uh, you know start start off from the top, Jaren. Of course, these are going to get, you know, more and more uh, specific as it goes on, but we're going to start very broad and get more specific over time. So my first question for this Don't Match Me Challenge is name an object that is commonly cone-shaped. Ooh. So just any object that's like, you know, shaped like a cone. In three, two, one, I have gone with the party hat. So if you said the party hat. You're you're out, <laughs> Matt. Mm-hmm. I said the dunce cap. Am I out? <laughs> I think it's I think it's different. <laughs> I, I I don't think that Matt. I don't think the dunce cap is politically correct anymore. So I apologize <laughs> to our friends out there, but uh, mm-hmm. that's immediately what came to mind. Oh man. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are all still in. So my second question is, um, you know. <laughs> Kind of, kind of based on a the story I uh, told earlier in this episode. Name a circular or spherical shaped candy. Uh, and I think in this kind of like context, I'm gonna like you know say anything that's like I'm gonna include like chocolate in candy, even though I know some people don't uh, fair, consider fair. chocolate to be in the same category. Okay. Okay. But name that thing in three. Two, one. I'm going with Reese's Pieces. Matt. Mm-hmm. I went with Whoppers. 
Ooh. Oh, I thought of the burger at first. No, it's not mm-hmm. Whoppers and Maltesers are, you know, they're different. They're, they're kind of the same, right? Or am I getting my chocolates like, with the uh, weird insides mixed up? They're like the Coke and Pepsi of, uh, you know, that malt chocolate uh, candy category. Fair. Jaren, personally, I prefer Maltesers over Whoppers. Yeah, not Maltesers hmm. have a weird chalkiness and... I don't know. I'll eat Maltesers and feel generally okay, but <laughs> biting into a Whopper makes my teeth feel weird. Oh, man. Jaren, do you remember the the candy bar or the chocolate bar called Crunchy? Yes. Did you like biting into those? Because I feel yes. like that reminds me of a like a hard Whopper. <laughs> no, man. I love a Crunchy. Matt, you can still get mm. Crunchies. Not like, they're not readily available, but... I feel like if you go down to the uh, chocolate aisle specifically, there's a chance you might see it. I always want to get a crunchy, Matt. All right. Joe and I always want to get a crispy crunch. um, Matt, I'd rather get a crunchy over a crispy crunch. Mm. Jared, personally, personally. I, I just recently drank, uh, you know how like they make those chocolate milk uh, ch- flavored like chocolates? Yes. Or no, the chocolate flavored chocolate milks. Yes. Jaren, the crispy crunch one always hits for me. Always hits, Matt. And, you know, going back to the dollar, no frills dollar days and getting one for a dollar, that's, <laughs> that's peak, uh, that's peak oh, adolescence, man. Matt. That's peak mm-hmm. adolescence. And also, uh, it's nutritious value, quote unquote, scares me <laughs> as uh-huh. an old man now. Mm-hmm. But they mm-hmm. do hit well. They do hit hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but, yeah, uh, that, going that... to question three, <laughs> going over to question three. Uh, so getting a little bit more specific on this one. You know, it is, so, uh, question three is, name the shape of any common road sign. I think there's like a handful of uh, common road sign shapes, so, you know, you just gotta, just gotta name one of them. In three, two, one, I've gone with the octagon for the stop sign. Okay, that. Mm-hmm. I thought you stopped me in my tracks, but I went with the triangle for the uh-huh. yield sign. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, that man. got a mm-hmm. pit on my stomach when you asked me that. Got scared <laughs> there. Got scared there. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking about triangles, that goes to my question number four, okay. which is name a type of triangle. Oof. Ooh, going back to geometry here, Damn, you know, hope, hopefully you guys remember the names of uh, different types of triangles. <laughs> Matt, I think I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I'm out for this round, but <laughs> I think I'm out yeah. because Matt, I, we might be on the same wavelength for this, but gotta, you know, got gotta face the music sometime. Ooh, all right, going in three, two, one. Personal favorite of mine. The isosceles triangle. Oof. Not... <laughs> mm-hmm. I might be really dumb here, but I went with the acute triangle. Because Matt, Ooh. <laughs> I like me, acute triangle. Hey. <laughs> Matt, uh-huh. This whole week, Duolingo mm-hmm. has been teaching me how to call things cute. And oh, <laughs> I already knew how to call things cute previously, but... Mm-hmm. The fact that so many lessons revolve around calling something cute or asking if someone is cute makes me a bit <laughs> uncomfortable, Matt, if I had to be really honest. Jaren, that's just Japanese culture. <laughs> Fair enough, Matt. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. But going on to my final question uh, of my shapes-based uh, don't match me challenge, uh, the final question is name one of these shapes on the face buttons of a PlayStation controller. You know, there are there are four shapes on the uh, you know right side face buttons of the PlayStation controller. You just gotta name one of them. So name that shape in three, two, one. I've gone with the cross or the X. Matt. Hmm. I have to confirm my answer with circle. Ooh. <laughs> Matt, mm-hmm. speaking about the PlayStation controller, mm-hmm. when you think of confirmed, do you think X or circle? Um, I, I think of X. Okay. Matt? I, I think that I always like got thrown off by that in anime or like manga mm-hmm. when like, you know, like X is correct and then the circle is 
or the circle is correct and oh, no wait no the circle is wrong or something it's it's backwards in some way i can't remember okay so x confirm for you mm-hmm. do you associate would you can associate cancel with then um i guess like circle i think for me it's more that like i associate the bottom button fair with uh confirm and then the uh right side button with cancel yeah that's the top how one I do is it menu, now. and then the left one is attack. But I, I still sometimes I have that inkling, Matt, because sometimes you know you'll play a Japanese developed PlayStation Two game and circle mm-hmm. for confirm sometimes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that always threw me off, Matt. That always yeah. threw me off. But Matt, mm-hmm. thankfully, uh, I was able to uh, don't not match you, and hopefully our friends didn't as well. But Matt, thank you mm-hmm. for bringing that. Uh, don't match me challenge in all different shapes and sizes, but hey. Matt, mm-hmm. a- another beefy boy episode this week. Less beefy than, you know, the last few weeks, but still beefy. None- Matt, I consider anything over our, uh, to be a beefy <laughs> boy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But- I don't think we've recorded a sub one hour episode in a really long time. I feel like I always want to, <laughs> but we never do. Jaren, I so want to switch <laughs> or like, you know, transition into the sub hour uh, okay. podcast format. Matt, mm-hmm. m- maybe for next week when you bring uh, that game whose name slips me right now, we can, unless something cool happens to me, which I doubt, <laughs> we'll try to get a sub hour episode starting next oh, week. Man. Mm-hmm. But until then, Matt, I want to thank you as always for joining me this week, editing this podcast and bringing the Don't Match Me Challenge. Hey, thanks, man. As always, Jaren, I want to thank you for hosting this show and, you know, bringing in this list of uh, good Marvel skins and bad Marvel skins. <laughs> thanks, man. I uh, want to thank uh, some dogs. I want to yeah. thank Ginny. I want to mm. thank Colonel. Uh, Matt, I want to thank your dog as well. Hey. I want to thank uh, the dogs that aren't with us right now. You know, pour mm-hmm. one out, pointing to the mm-hmm. sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to thank Marin. I want to thank mm. uh, Gojo. I want to thank Juju. Uh, shout out to Juju. I want to thank Akira. Uh, hope we see her again. Uh, <laughs> Matt. Mm-hmm. I want to thank Shapes. I want to thank hey. the number two. And oh, I want man. to thank Matt. Uh-huh. I want to thank the concept of Gwenpool. <laughs> <laughs> where I like how she's technically not Gwen Stacy anymore. And she's not... Oh. Sorry, Jared. I just realized, like, I processed earlier that you said Gwenpool. I even wrote it down. And this whole time, I was thinking of Spider Gwen. <laughs> no, a Spider Gwen was a skin a few seasons ago, but Gwenpool mm-hmm. is not. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of, hey, she's not a Gwen Stacy variant. So that means Sony can't have her in the movies. <laughs> and likewise, she's not a Deadpool variant. And that means Fox can't have her in the movies. Oh, man. Went to Gwenpool. So, was a Gwenpool solo movie happening, Jaren? Uh, Matt, mm-hmm. I feel like you run into the same issue with uh, Deadpool, where uh, she might not fit in a semi-serious MCU movie, where probably a cartoon. Matt, probably a cartoon. Are you looking forward to mm-hmm. that new Spider-Man cartoon, Matt? There's a new Spider-Man cartoon. I think it was know? announced at D23. I think. Oh, I did not know that. I don't. I probably don't know it either, but. <laughs> Maybe we can look that up and not discuss it next week because sub one hour, Matt. Sub one uh-huh. hour. Sub one hour. Sub one hour. <laughs> but until then, Matt, please take it away. This has been a Mistake Zone and we're all out of good Marvel skins. We are, Matt. We truly are. <laughs> <laughs>